Good day to you all and welcome to the chemistry class. The topic to be treated today is oxides of carbon. Oxides of carbon. These are the objectives for the day. One, why carbon has more than one oxide. Two, names and formula of oxides of carbon. Three, processes that release and remove oxides of carbon from the atmosphere. Four, properties of the oxides of carbon. Five, uses and tests for the oxides of carbon. And six, toxicity of the oxides of carbon. So let's start right away. Carbon is one of the elements in the periodic table that exhibits variable oxidation states. This is one of the reasons why it forms a large variety of compounds, part of which are oxides. Oxides of any element are formed when such element reacts with oxygen from the air or atmosphere. Carbon forms two oxides, both of which occurs naturally as gases and are present in the atmosphere in different quantities. These are the two oxides. One, carbon two oxide, commonly called carbon monoxide. Its formula is CO, capital letter C, capital letter O. Number two, carbon four oxide, commonly called carbon dioxide. This oxide can readily be liquefied and solidifies depending on the use for which it is intended. Its formula is CO2. C and O written in capital letters and subscript 2 after O. Carbon 2 oxide is formed by heating carbon in limited supply of oxygen or air. The oxidation state of carbon in carbon 2 oxide is plus 2. Carbon 4 oxide is formed by heating carbon in excess hair. The oxidation state of carbon in carbon 4 oxide is plus 4. Now, since the two oxides of carbon can be found in the atmosphere at different quantities, it becomes imperative to treat processes that release and remove them from the atmosphere. So we're starting with processes that release carbon four oxide into the atmosphere. Processes that release carbon four oxide into the atmosphere. Number one, respiration of living organisms, especially animals and humans. Two, complete combustion of carbon containing compounds such as coal, wood, petroleum, and its products. Number three, decay of all organic substances. Four, volcanic eruptions. Five, fermentation of sugars and other carbohydrates. Six, weathering of rocks. That is a process during which limestone, a rock type, decomposes. And lastly, decomposition of hydrogen trioxocarbonates four and trioxocarbonates four compounds. Quickly, let's consider processes that remove carbon four oxide from the atmosphere. Number one, photosynthesis. During this process, plants make use of carbon four oxide released into the atmosphere by animals and humans to produce starch. Number two, carbon cycle. Number three, absorption by alkalis, especially during the hardening of mortar and cement in the construction industry. We'll time out here and come back. But before we do, I'd like you to quickly write down this question and attend to it. Write down three processes each that release and remove carbon four oxide from the atmosphere. Processes that release carbon four oxide into the atmosphere and three processes also that remove carbon four oxide from the atmosphere. Thank you.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your break time. We are starting this segment with processes that release carbon two oxide into the atmosphere. Processes that release carbon two oxide into the atmosphere. Number one, fumes from the exhaust of automobiles and engines on account of incomplete combustion of fuel used in them. Number two, incomplete combustion of domestic fuels due to improperly adjusted gas appliances and furnaces, kerosene, wood, and uh, charcoal stoves. Number three, wood burning and uh, forest fires. Number four, volcanic eruptions. The next thing to be considered is processes that remove carbon two oxide from the atmosphere. Processes that remove carbon two oxide from the atmosphere. Number one, the reaction of carbon two oxide with other compounds in the atmosphere to convert it to carbon four oxide. Number two, the reaction of certain microorganisms found in the soil and water. These also converts carbon two oxide to carbon four oxide. Essentially, the processes that remove carbon two oxide from the atmosphere convert it to carbon four oxide. Our next objective is physical properties of the oxides of carbon. And we shall start with the physical properties of carbon two oxide. Physical properties of carbon two oxide. Number one, it is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. Number two, it is easily ignited. It burns in air with a blue flame to produce carbon four oxide. Number three, it is insoluble in water. And number four, it is slightly lighter than air. So the next thing is the physical properties of carbon four oxide. Number one, it is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. Number two, it is denser than air. Number three, it is moderately soluble in water to form acidic solution. This means carbon four oxide is an acid anhydride. Acid anhydride. An acid anhydride is a substance which dissolves in water to produce acids. Number four, it turns moist blue litmus paper to pink. And uh, number five, carbon four oxide is readily liquefied by cooling and uh, solidifies to form dry ice. Now let's take a, a very, very short activity before we time out. I want you to write down this question in your notebook. You will really be able to do it with um, the content of the lesson we have taken. With the aid of a T-chart, that means a table, compare the physical properties of carbon two oxide and uh, carbon four oxide. I take that again. With the aid of a T chart, compare the physical properties of carbon two oxide and uh, carbon four oxide. We will time out here. Please do the activity before the next lesson. Thank you very much. We are back for the last segment of this lesson, and we shall be considering to start with uses of the oxides of carbon. So let's start with the uses of carbon two oxide. Number one, it is used as a gaseous fuel because it is a major component of water gas and producer gas, both of which are gaseous and uh, 
industrial fuels. Number two, it is used to produce a large variety of organic compounds such as alcohols, esters, and uh, organic acids. Number three, it is used as a reducing agent in the extraction of metals. The next thing is the uses of carbon-4 oxide. Uses of carbon-4 oxide. It is used in fire extinguishers because it does not support combustion. Number two, it is used in the production of mineral water or carbonated drinks. Carbon-4 oxide is a gas that bubbles when carbonated drinks are opened. It is responsible for the pop sound produced when corked drinks are opened. Number three, solid carbon-4 oxide is called dry ice and is used as a cooling agent in refrigerators and nuclear reactors. Number four, carbon-4 oxide is used as a leavening agent in confectionaries because it is produced by baking powder in the process of baking. Number five, it is used by plants during photosynthesis to produce starch. And uh, number six, carbon-4 oxide is used in solvent process to produce sodium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4 and sodium trioxocarbonate 4. Quickly, let us consider test for the oxides of carbon. Test for the oxides of carbon. So we'll start with test for carbon-2 oxide. Carbon-2 oxide burns with a blue flame to give carbon-4 oxide, which turns lime water milky. Lime water in chemistry is simply a solution of calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide. The next thing is test for carbon-4 oxide. Carbon-4 oxide turns lime water milky due to the precipitation of calcium trioxocarbonate 4. With excess carbon-4 oxide, the milkiness produced disappears due to the formation of soluble calcium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4. And then the last thing to be considered under this topic oxides of carbon is toxicity of the oxides of carbon. Toxicity of the oxides of carbon. A toxic substance is a poisonous substance capable of causing death if care is not taken. The two oxides of carbon are toxic. Carbon-2 oxide is poisonous because it displaces the oxygen in the blood and deprives the heart, brain, and other vital organs of the body of oxygen. It combines with hemoglobin in the red blood cells to form carboxyhemoglobin, which is the substance that prevents distribution of oxygen around the body. Carbon-4 oxide is not altogether injurious to health, it is required for certain biological functions in the body. It, however, must not be inhaled in large quantities over a long period of time because it causes dizziness, confusion, fatigue, headache, seizures, central nervous system damage, and death. This is where we will end the lesson on the oxides of carbon. I'm sure you have learned tremendously. Thank you very much for listening and attending the class. God bless you.